I wanted to ask, with obviously the game didn't go the way you, you wanted on offense, especially in the elements, a lot of kind of mishandling of the ball. And, and I was curious um, how much of the game plan um, going into the game was kind of dependent on and kind of taking the weather into a factor. And as the rain kind of progressed in that game, how much did the game plan actually change? Yeah, I mean, the weather is always going to be a factor. We know it down here. So you know, we didn't execute, probably could have called some calls that, you know, put our guys in a better position too. So, you know, I think uh, a lot of those like to have back uh, the way that we we did really, really we executed or called the, the game. Mary? Hi, George. I know you have another game left that's your focus, uh, but we're probably not going to be able to talk to you again until July. So I was going to ask you if you'd be kind enough to, to take a minute just to explain in your mind what you regret this season, what you wish you would have done more of collectively as a group, what you personally wish you would have done differently as a play caller if you're willing to placate us and uh, and share some of those thoughts. Yeah, I mean, Barry, uh, it's it's really hard right now just because of how life of a football coach or the team is. We kind of take it day by day. Um, and really on normal downs with New England, they're a good team. Uh, really not ready for that. But um, obviously, you know, every game that, that – we, we'd like to perform just enough to win. And, uh, you know, there's some games that um, we'd like to perform better. Um, you know, we got another opportunity, which uh, New England's a good team. And so uh, we'd like to finish on a good note. And I was going to ask you in the second half, uh, the fact Duke didn't uh, have a carry, was that just a function of the score of the game, feeling like he needed to be pass heavy, trailing, you know, by double figures? Yeah, I mean, that's how the game ends up playing. You know, we're pretty balanced. You know, we like to take out the third downs, the two minutes, um, you know, and really look at normal downs as far as a balance standpoint goes. Uh, then, you know, we got the ball really, you know, we had really five minutes of time of possession backed up to start. And, uh, you know, we were able to move the ball with a couple of those actions. So uh, we left it in that mode and, uh, you know, kind of sputtered out right there around field goal range. So, um, you know, at, at the point where, you know, in the fourth quarter, we're down multiple scores. There's there's really only one way to get back quickly. So, um, you know, I don't think it was a factor of not wanting to give them the ball. That's for sure. Really just kind of how the game ended up playing out. Thanks. Marcel? Hey, George. Uh, just wanted to ask you about something, too, I was talking about after the game. He said that it was your intention to, to push the ball downfield. Uh, was that – was that more just the game plan heading into it, or was that something you try to stick with even as weather conditions worsen? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, <clears throat> I think that's a. I don't. I don't know exactly. You know where that. What that exactly meant was it every play or you know on the first play of the game. You know we were able to get a good chunk. Um, so yeah, that was kind of our game plan going in. Uh, we ran the ball quite a bit against New Orleans, so. Um, and, and, you know, it worked out to start. Um, and then, you know, we kind of go from there play by play. So uh, I think, uh, you know, we needed to, to do more than just hand the ball off like we showed against New Orleans. I think that's kind of uh, really where we were getting at with that. Gotcha. And then if I could just ask one more thing, uh, if the, the decisions to use Jacoby in short yardage situations, uh, was there ever a thought, I mean, if the plan was to throw the ball downfield, was there ever a thought to use Tua in that situation instead of Jacoby? Or what was the process behind using him instead? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that process. Um, you know, whether it's a quarterback sneak or, you know, a fumble snap on a previous play uh, that we had in a short yardage. So, um, you know, we have plays for Tua and plays for Jacoby. So um, I'll kind of leave it at that. Gotcha. Thanks, George. Joe Shad. Hey, George. Um, through 16 games, the team is 29th in yards per play. I wanted to ask you about that statistic. It's it's obviously been discussed throughout the entire season. Is it actually not as relevant? Are there are there other statistics that are far more re relevant or do you think that for an offense to score more points, the yards per play would need to increase? 
Um, you know, I think that there's probably some teams that have a good yards for play number and maybe in the red area do not. I don't I, I would have to dive into that a little bit deeper. Um, I know the one score that, you know, we, we want to be ahead at the end of the game and we've done that half the times we haven't the other half. So um, there's a lot that we can improve on, I think, as a as a unit. And uh, we'll look at those here after this next game. Another thing that I wanted to ask you about over the 16 games was 13th in the NFL and third down efficiency. Now, obviously, Sunday is not a, a, a very good game in general, but for the course of the season, do you sense reason for optimism relative to um, Tua's third down? What, what are you seeing from Tua on third down? Well, you know, uh, last game, you know, it's it's – pretty noticeable that you pointed that out because we have been good on third down and uh, our yards to attain the first down has been uh, a lot lower than it was on Sunday. We had, you know, quite a bit of um, third and eight pluses and we weren't able to convert those. Thus, we weren't able to stay on the field and we weren't able to run it more. And uh, so a lot of these questions that were asked kind of revolve on staying on the field, staying on track and first downs. And, uh, you know, when you're third and long, it's it's hard. And we showed that on Sunday. And so, um, you know, the more manageable we can get, the more we can attain those. And uh, then we, we hang on to the ball um, you know, and, and really turn those drives into points. Thank you. David? Hey, George. Now getting about a full year to evaluate Hunter Long as, as a rookie, uh, how do you think he fared? Uh, what are the the strengths that you've seen in his game, and uh, where do you think he can still improve? Yeah, like any rookie, there's there's a lot to to learn uh, from personnel to technique um, to you know our design of our plays and how we want to get open in a passing game and block. I think tight ends really a, uh, a unique position because of all the different responsibilities, and we got a good group in that room. And a lot of those guys have played, uh, and those guys have played, you know, each game. Um, so that room's been relatively healthy too. I think Hunter's learned uh, this year from those guys, um, and you know, we we expect him to continue to improve. And I also want to ask about uh, Durham Smythe uh, getting more involved in the passing game this year. Uh, how did you see that growth uh, uh, come about? Durham's reliable, and um, we we we've seen that in practice. So it doesn't really surprise us. We just try to be a little bit more balanced in that room, um, you know, with Mike obviously carrying the big load. Um, so, you know, he's performed uh, pretty steady the whole season. Travis? Hey, good morning, Coach. Kind of to that point about your tight end usage, um, you guys wound up with more 12 personnel. You, you have more 12 personnel usage than anybody else in the league by quite a long shot. I was just curious if that was one of those things coming into the year, that was the plan, or if that's one of those situations where that kind of is just how the, the, the game plan and offense develops as the year goes along. Yeah, it's, um, you know, starting the season and how we finish, there's probably a lot of variables that have come up, whether it's injuries or um, uh, especially receiver position, um, you know, in and out of the lineup. Obviously, uh, we've had some some injuries there too that people have played. So those guys, like I said, have been a, a healthy group for the most part. And uh, they're able to do multiple things. They're able to block. They're able to, you know, block in line. They're able to uh, detach if we need to. Um, you know, and it's a pretty reliable group from an assignment standpoint. So uh, as much as we can use those guys, we'd like to. Omar? Uh, George, there have been eight games this season where you guys have produced less than 300 yards of offense. Obviously, the hope is that that would, would be high, a little bit higher in terms of the production level. What do you feel has been the issue that sort of hindered the offense, not from a yardage and a scoring standpoint this year? I mean, I think it's uh, maintaining the ball, time of possession. You know, look at those games where we're under 30 minutes. It's usually probably going to equate to that amount of yardage. Uh, we didn't really perform well in the two-minute scenarios either. We had three of them on uh, on Sunday, you know, and uh, didn't get any production out of it. So um, there's a few few of those situations that uh, third down, two-minute, where uh, we just didn't perform up to our standards. So holding on to the ball will help us get more yards and get us into scoring range, get more points, 
uh, you know, get us into that area where we've actually been, you know, above average. So, um, you know, that's kind of the goal as far as moving the ball. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Barry. Hi, George. I was I was curious as you look back at the year, how much did having a young offensive line that struggled early in the season affect your play calling? Might you have been able to be more uh, aggressive downfield if the line had been older and more experienced? Yeah, I mean that's that's where most of the the um, passing game starts is protection. So. Um, whether it's a matchup that we could do better on or, um, you know, it's it's executing our, our job as a protector, whether it's back, a lineman, or a tight end, uh, that group's got to gotta give the quarterback enough time for the receivers to get open too. And, and uh, if we're having to get the ball out of our hands because we're getting pressure, then, uh, you know, we can't get the ball downfield. So a lot of that plays into how the game is being played and how the matchups end up being. You know, we had some – uh, guys in there moving around a little bit. Liam's uh, learning and improving each game. Austin's going inside, you know. Uh, we've had some rotation going on at center. Uh, right side seemed to be pretty consistent as far as health-wise. So all those variables take uh, take place into calling a play. And, um, you know, we want to make sure we give our guys the best opportunity to execute that play. So uh, protection, depth of route, uh, pattern, options for the quarterback, all that goes into to any play call or play design. 